Uh, again, welcome to our home. Uh, it's been a minute and uh, good to be back. Again, hope you all had a good holiday. I know we did. So um, tonight, the uh, my thought is from the river to the sea. You know, this week on my thoughts, I'd like to examine how God Almighty can induce our enemies to bless us, even though they believe that they are really cursing us, much like the evil Bilaam, whose total intent was to curse the Jewish nation. However, God Almighty put a, a bit in his mouth, so to speak, and he was forced to say words of blessing, though his intent was to curse them. You know, there was a commentary that I read in the book called Eleno Shabbat, on the Hebrew word Hitzalti, which means, I will rescue you. This word is found in the portion of Ayera, and it is one of the five terms of salvation that we recite on the, from our Pesach Haggadah at our Seder table. The Talmud in the Tractate of Brachot asked an, an interesting question. It concerns the opening words in the third chapter of the Book of Psalms, Tehillim. It begins with the Hebrew words, Mizmar le David, a song of David as he fled from Avshalom, his son. In reality, it should have begun with the words, Kina le David, a dirge by David. After all, how is it possible that when David and Malach, King David was running from his son Avshalom, who wanted to usurp his kingdom and kill him, that he would compose the psalm? The Talmud continues, so what, what, this be, what can this be compared to? It states, to a person who was given, was given a promissory note to someone, until the time that he has repaid his debt, he was distressed. However, once he paid it off, then he was truly happy. This then was the scenario of Dovin After his indiscretion with Bathsheba, he was informed by Nasan Hanavi, by Nasan the prophet, in Shmuel Beis, that God Almighty had instructed him to say to David, Hineni hakim alecha mi beisecha, that I shall rise against you a rebellion from your own household. Well, as you can imagine, David was concerned. He thought perhaps the person that will cause bring the rebellion will be a slave or an illegitimate child, someone who will not have mercy on me. However, when he saw that the rebellion came from his beloved son of Shalom, well, he was elated. He felt that a son doesn't kill his father. That was the reason that he called the third psalm a song. Rebionis and Abishitz points out that Shalom actually did try to kill his, husband, his father. So, so what is the solace that David find in the fact that it was his own son who mounted the rebellion, since it seemed that even he showed him no mercy? So Rabbi Yosef Shalom Eliashev explains that Rabbi Yonah Nebuchadnezzar is teaching us an important insight into the ways of heaven. He said that there are two types of suffering that God Almighty may bring upon a person. First, is as a punishment for the person's sins. That type of suffering is brought about to wipe away the sin and to grant atonement for his transgression. When a person experiences that type of suffering, he will be under the hashkocha, the watchful eye of God Almighty, his benevolent Father in heaven. You know, there are other times, however, when a person so angers God Almighty to the point that he pushes this individual away from his presence. He abandons him to the vicissitudes of nature. This is much like the case of a father whose son infuriates him to the point where he has totally given up any hope of his son repenting his evil ways. The father then banishes his son from his house, telling him, go, do whatever you want. I no longer care anymore what you do. Now, this is the second type of suffering, one in which a person no longer receives any hashkocha, any of God's special divine protection. So the question becomes, how can we distinguish between these two types of suffering? Sir Bionis and Abish had stated that if the suffering that comes upon a person is perceived as natural, meaning not unusual or unprecedented, then it is a sign that God Almighty has abandoned him to the forces of nature. He has been, so to speak, cut off. God may no longer take an active interest in his life. However, if the suffering that one experiences is unnatural, 
unusual or unprecedented, well, then it is obvious that his suffering has been preordained by God, his benevolent Father in heaven. This type of suffering is a clear sign that the person in question is still under the hashkocha, the divine protection of God Almighty, who has brought the suffering upon him. So this is what Dovin Melk meant when he began the psalm with the words, Mizmor, a song. He was singing to God his Father in heaven since the suffering that he was experiencing as he fled from his son Avshalom, who wanted to usurp his throne and kill him. Well, that was totally unnatural. To him, it seemed totally outside the realm of possibility that his beloved son would want to take his life. This fact alerted David that though he was suffering, it was orchestrated by God his Father in heaven, a true sign that God Almighty was still watching over him and protecting him from any harm, hence a song. You know, if we look into our history, we can clearly see that much of our suffering as a nation has been outside the realm of nature, unnatural. We have been persecuted and exiled from one country to another by one religion or another. And yet, miraculously, we are still here to talk about it. Whether it was Egypt, Persia, Greece, Rome, Spain, or even Poland, it was not natural for us to have been treated as badly as we were. There has not been a country in the world where Jews have resided that has not benefited from their citizenship. You know, according to Wikipedia, of the 965 individuals who were recipients of the Nobel Prize between the years 1901 through 2023, at least 214 have been awarded to members of the Jewish nation. This is the case even though anti-Semitism has played a part in their choices. Well, this fact is even more startling since Jews comprise less than one quarter of a percent of the world's population. Nonetheless, they have been presented awards in all six categories of the Nobel Foundation's awards. 19% in chemistry, 41% in economics, 13% in literature, 8% in peace, 25% in physics, and 26% in medicine. The last country in Europe that should have perpetrated the Holocaust was Germany. For many years, Germany was good to their Jewish citizens. They were the first country in Europe that allowed Jews to attend university. The intermarriage rate in Germany before World War II was 75%. Jews were involved in all levels of German society and high finance. There were even Jewish Olympians. Germany was known as the most refined country in the world. The fact that it was Germany that perpetrated the Holocaust was totally unnatural. You know, when we view suicide bombers, zealots, willing to randomly take the lives of innocent men, women, and children at the cost of their own lives, well, it is unnatural. Survival is a natural desire for all of mankind. A case was reported of terrorists who were apprehended in an ambulance that came from the Palestinian territory. The terrorist was an Arab woman and her newborn baby. She had given birth just a few days earlier and was now trying to enter Israeli territory in the ambulance that was transporting her and her newborn child to an Israeli hospital. On the way, they passed through an Israeli checkpoint. After inspecting the vehicle, the soldiers discovered <clears throat> that this woman and her baby were booby-trapped with explosives. The mother was planning to detonate the explosives in a congested area within Israel proper, something that is totally outside the norm. What mother would opt to kill herself and her newborn baby? Proof that God Almighty is still very much in attendance. You know, when we look back on the 1973 Yom Kippur War, God Almighty's Hashkocha, God's watchful eye, was very evident. What seemed to be the worst of all scenarios, after all, being attacked on the holiest day of the Hebrew calendar. But in reality, it was a blessing in disguise. If the war had begun at any other day of the year, it would have taken much longer to muster the troops, but not on Yom Kippur. That is the one day of the year where all Israelis, both religious and secular, 
attend religious services. They made it much easier to contact all the soldiers. In addition, traffic in Israel is horrendous. The roads are always congested, but not on Yom Kippur. The troops were able to reach the front much quicker than any other day of the year. Then on a spiritual level, we believe that on the day of Yom Kippur, the day itself, God Almighty forgives the sins of all Jews. That being the case, then all the soldiers that went into battle on that day, well, they merited more protection from God their Father in Heaven than on, that they would have merited on any other day of the year. Again, nothing is an accident. Then on October 7th, Rachman al at the Peace Festival, attended by young Israelis, many of whom sympathized with the Palestinian cause. The terrorist attack with many young men and women being killed and injured. The, the Hamas had to know that due to the barbaric and inhumane actions taken by their fighters, killing babies in their cribs, gang raping women, and destroying and killing everything and everyone that they could, they had to realize that the Israeli government would have no alternative but to respond with swift and overpowering force. The Israeli army is considered to be, by some, the fifth, or others say the eighth most powerful army in the world. There was no way for Hamas to win. It was suicidal on their part. It was an act that went completely against nature. With this massacre, they forced the Jews of Israel and all over the world to fight and to pray to their God, their Father in Heaven, for His assistance. God has once again forced His children to cry out to Him, and they have answered the call, both in Israel and all over the world. You know, we witnessed in the Torah that it was Bilaam, the evil prophet of the nations, who wanted to curse the Jews. However, it was God Almighty who put a bit in his mouth and forced him to bless the Jews, not to curse them. Every day, as we begin our morning prayers, we recite the Hebrew words, Matovu o'alecha Yaakov, how pleasant are your tents, Israel. Well, these are words that God Almighty forced Bilaam to utter. God Almighty turned Bilaam's curses into blessings. So today, today, we hear the chant from Hamas, Iran, and all of their terrorist satellite organizations. Even all the pro-Palestinian protesters over the world are chanting the same slogan, from the river to the sea. A call for the complete annihilation of all Jews living in Israel. In addition to a call for an increase of anti-Semitism throughout the world. To us as Jews and those non-Jews who support the State of Israel, well, we find these words frightening, offensive, and disgusting. This Pesach, my wife and I spent our holiday at a Pesach program in Stamford, Connecticut. I heard one of the speakers, a Rabbi Menachem Opter, explain these same words, but just a little bit differently. You know, the Nile is the second longest river in the world. So from the river connects with our past since the Torah in the book of Exodus tells us that it was Paro's daughter, Basia, who took Moshe's cradle from the river, the Nile, in the past. Then the Torah tells us that it was Moshe, the one who was taken from the river, the savior of the children of Israel, who led them to the sea, the Red Sea. It was there that they crossed over on dry land and exited as a free nation. While at the exact same moment as the Jewish nation were being born, uh, their Egyptian tormentors were dying. They were all drowned in that same sea. This is why we recite daily 365 days of the year in our morning prayers, the Az Yashir, the song of praise that was sung at the crossing of the sea, from the river to the sea. The prayer, the Yar Yisrael, and the Israelite saw, which precedes the Az Yashir, is also recited daily. In fact, it is the only prayer that we recite on the night of Pesach that actually mentions Moshe's name. This prayer begins with the Israelites witnessing the death of their enemy, Mes al Svatayom, which means dead on the bank of the sea. The next verse mentions Yad Hachazaka, which means the great arm, which again, which is an allusion to the outstretched arm of Basia, Paro's daughter, as she brought in Moshe's basket from the river. Again, from the river to the sea. The prayer ends with the words, V'yaminu b'ashem of Moshe Abdo, which means that they believed in God and in Moshe, his servant. 
May God Almighty repeat in the present to all of our enemies what he did in the past. So let us remember that we always have a benevolent Father in Heaven who loves us dearly. Yes, there are times he administers tough love, but it is always love. The Lubavitcher Rebbe from Menachem Mendel Schneerson of Blessed Memory said before his death that we are the last generation before the coming of the Messiah. He said that he had done all that he could do and that now it was up to his Hasidim, his followers, to usher in the coming of Mashiach. Much like what the children of Israel experienced at the crossing of the sea, Moshe did not lead them into the sea. He was told by God Almighty to move to the rear. What caused the sea to split and what brought about the final freedom of the Jews from Egypt was their active participation. It occurred only after Nachshon ben Aminadov, the prince of the tribe of Yehuda, jumped into the sea, followed by his whole tribe. The Rebbe is gone, but his words are still ring out loud and clear. We need to become active participants. We need to jump into the sea, the sea of Torah and Mitzvot, so that our enemies will go from the river to the sea, as did our Egyptian tormentors in Egypt with the coming of Mashiach Tzukainu. Now, again, let me thank you for listening. Again, this is very important. When you hear the term from the river to the sea, smile. Know there's a God in heaven that is looking out for us, that doesn't sleep or slumber. Again, we will always be protected by our loving Father. Again, thank you very much for listening. Again, please make sure that you subscribe, push like, and again, share with your friends. Again, it's an important lecture for people to know. Again, it's been so difficult for us to hear these words. Maybe now we'll smile a whole lot more. God bless, be well, and again, there will be a musical rendition after this uh, class. Thank you. God bless and have a good Shabbos.